From the beginning, Ducks Unlimited has provided its members with publications that inform, motivate, and entertain. What started as a quarterly newsletter culminated in 1963 with the launch of Ducks Unlimited magazine. Today, it's one of America's leading sources of information on waterfowl, wetlands conservation, and waterfowl hunting. But through the decades, the focus has always remained the same, producing a magazine that our members will value and enjoy reading. This is the story of what it takes to produce an issue of DU Magazine. From concept to doorstep. As is true with almost everything DU does, teamwork is key. Three teams contribute directly to production of the magazine, the editorial, creative services, and advertising staffs. But many others are involved along the way, including membership, information technology, DU's executive team, and a pool of talented freelance photographers and writers. Another vital resource is our reader survey, which provides the magazine staff with valuable member feedback on every issue we publish. Since 1992, the editors have used the reader survey results to help guide editorial planning. Every issue begins the same way, blank pages that must be filled with revenue generating ads or interesting editorial content, so long range planning is essential. We use an editorial planning grid to create each issue. Editors use this spreadsheet to ensure a balanced mix of content in each issue and throughout the year. Every spring, the magazine staff has a planning meeting to create the following year's editorial schedule. Editors bring long lists of ideas, but only the best ideas make their way into the magazine. Once our executive team approves our editorial plan, we make assignments to our writers and photographers. The writing process always begins with thorough research. Most stories are built around extensive telephone interviews, but some require travel. After the story has been written, it is edited, given a title, and routed to the executive team and other staff members for review. This provides an opportunity for comments and revisions. Meanwhile, the photo editor gathers digital photographs we might use to illustrate each of the stories in the issue. The best choices are passed along to the art director. The art director designs the magazine, sizing and arranging photos, stylizing headlines, and flowing in the text to create a layout that conveys the overall tone and theme of the story, while providing the reader a visual setting. While the editors and designers are working on the issue's editorial content, the advertising team focuses on finalizing ad sales. Many magazines have two major revenue streams, subscription-based income and advertising sales. Because DU is membership-based, advertising is our only revenue stream. This revenue offsets some of the magazine's production costs and helps drive the number of pages in each issue. As ad sales close, we create the issue's page map, which assigns all the ads and editorial to specific pages. Once a story is designed, the editors proofread each page four times. The CEO takes a final look at the issue before the page files are transferred electronically to our printer, Fry Communications in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Today, magazines are printed using computer-to-plate technology. Through this process, data from the page files are digitally transferred onto aluminum plates. Each of these plates will apply one of four ink colors, red, blue, yellow, and black. All of the striking waterfowl photos in DU Magazine are printed using just these four colors. Each plate is chemically treated to hold ink and repel water. During printing, the plate is lubricated and inked, and the inked image is transferred onto a long rubber roller. As the paper feeds through the press, each roller applies one of the four ink colors. The creative director is responsible for press checks. The magazine is printed in groups of pages called signatures. As each 12, 24, or 48-page signature begins running on the press, printed samples are pulled. The creative director inspects them and works with the press operators to adjust the color and ink density on each page. Once final adjustments are made, the creative director locks those specifications into a computer, and the press holds them for the remainder of the run. About eight hours later, the creative director is called back to the plant to press check the next signature. Throughout the printing process, the press runs continuously. Shifts of press operators work day and night until all the signatures are printed, folded, and bundled. After the final press run, the printed signatures are delivered to the printing plant's bindery, where all the folded signatures are mechanically grouped in the proper order, glued together to form a magazine, trimmed, and then labeled with the member's address. 
We've finished printing and binding in about five days. Now we have to deliver the issue to our members. About 60% of our copies are co-made. Fry merges these copies with other periodicals to produce a larger, pre-sorted mail stream, often totaling more than two million pieces. This helps reduce postal costs for everyone in the co-mail pool. The remaining 40% of our copies are drop shipped directly to U.S. Postal Service distribution facilities. And finally, what began a year earlier as story concepts on a planning grid arrives in the member's mailbox as is eagerly awaited DU Magazine. For everyone who has a hand in producing the magazine, this is the defining moment, the culmination of many hours of planning, teamwork, and creativity. If we've done our jobs well, members will enjoy reading about DU's conservation work, learning more about waterfowl, and maybe even picking up a hunting tip to try next season. Most of all, we hope every issue helps strengthen our members' connection to DU and reinforces that they're part of a special organization, one whose supporters share a passion for wetland and waterfowl.